see. Now Peter and John went on up together into the temple at the hour of prayer, being the ninth hour. And a certain man laid from his mother's womb was carried, whom they laid daily at the gate of the temple, which is called Beautiful, to ask alms of them that entered into the temple, who seeing Peter and John about to go into the temple, asked an alms. And Peter, fastening his eyes upon him with John, said, Look on us. And he gave heed unto them, expecting to receive something of thee. Then Peter said, Silver and gold have I none, but such as I have, give I thee. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, rise up and walk. And he took him by the right hand and waited for a little while. Said, I think maybe I just misprayed somehow. Or other. And the scripture says, and immediately. Everybody say immediately. Immediately. His feet and ankle bones received strength. Verse 8. And he leaping up stood and walked and entered with them into the temple, walking and leaping and praising God. Here was a man that was led from yeah. his birth. And he couldn't walk from the womb. And he could never walk. All he could do is go by a gate and ask for money. Ask for somebody to just give him a little bit of something so that he could operate. But whenever he went see the apostles and the apostles seen him, he said, Silver, Peter said, Silver and gold have I not. He thought they were going to send him a little money to help him buy a cup of coffee that day. But here's what the situation was. The Peter came to him, an apostle. He said, I don't have money. But such as I have, I give to him. In the name of Jesus Christ of heaven, rise up and walk. And look what it says. And all the people saw him walking and praising God. And they knew that it was he which sat for alms at the beautiful gate of the temple. And they were filled with wonder and amazement at that which had happened unto him. Let me stop right there. Give me a few more minutes. You know what's happened to us? You know what's happened to churches? I tell you what's happened. They, they started moving God out of the picture of what the Lord could do. And now the churches have been dried up. And if we're not careful, the meaning of that I saw the church, we will become dried up. Can I get an amen? Amen. Give me just a minute. I'm going. And the lame man which was healed held Peter and John. All the people ran together unto them in the porch that is called Solomon's uh, greatly, greatly wondering. Verse number 12. And when Peter saw it, he answered unto the people, ye men of Israel, why marvel ye at this? Or why look ye so earnestly on us? As though by our own power or holiness we had made this man to walk. Mm -hmm. The God of Abraham, and of Isaac, and of Jacob, the God of our fathers, had glorified his son Jesus, whom ye delivered up and denied him in the presence of Pilate when he was determined to let him go. But ye denied the Holy One and the just and desire a murderer to be granted unto you. And kill the prince of life, whom God had raised from the dead, whereof we are witnesses. Verse 65. And his name through faith in his name hath made this man strong, 
whom ye see and know. Yea, the faith which is by him had given him this perfect soundness in the presence of you all. 1 Peter chapter 1, verse number, uh, chapter 2, verse 1 through 9. Here's why. Wherefore, lay aside all malice and all guile and hypocrisy and impudence and all evil speaking. As newborn babes desire the sincere milk of the world, that ye may grow thereby. If so be ye have tasted that the Lord is gracious, to whom coming as unto a living stone, disallowed indeed of men, but chosen of God and precious, ye also as lively stones are built of a spiritual house and holy priesthood, to offer up spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God by Jesus Christ. Wherefore also it is contained in the scripture, Behold, I lay in Zion a chief cornerstone, elect precious, and he that believeth upon him shall not be confounded. Unto you therefore which believe he is precious, but unto them which be disobedient, the stone which the builders disallowed, the same is made the head of the corner. And a stone of stumbling and a rock of offense even to them which stumble at the word being disobedient, whereunto also they were appointed. Now, I've got my Bible here, and I don't recommend that you do this. But I want to show you something. This precious cornerstone yes. is Jesus Christ. Yes. And to, the, to those that believe in him, he is valuable. He is valuable. But here's what we do. We kick the word around in our mind. And before you know it, it starts getting in our way. We start stumbling into the word of God. And then we want to blame and see, you know who we're really blaming? We're blaming Jesus Christ. Because somehow or another, there's got to be something again within us. Oh, well, I, I got the Holy Ghost years ago. Well, I'm proud of it. But here's the thing. Something has to be churned up within our spirit over and over again. We have to remind ourselves that we're going to live for Him with everything that is in us. Acts chapter 4. I gotta finish this. Acts chapter 4, verse 10 through 12. Be it known unto you and unto all the people of Israel that by the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, whom ye crucified, whom God raised from the dead, even by him let this man stand here before you hope. Verse 11. This is so which was said in all of you builders, which has become the head of the corner. Let me stop right there. See, here's what we've done. We've stopped putting Jesus in the scenario. We pulled him out because you just don't say that. You don't talk about the blood of the Lamb. You don't do such and such. But you see, what man has done, man has become so engulfed in himself and herself that we forget where, what his name really means to us and what his name is supposed to be to us 